We are back with another 900 manual swap video. Today we're going to be putting the finishing touches on this swap in order to actually make it drive. I should say the mechanical finishing touches on the swap and uh, hopefully get it running. So let's go ahead, jump into it. In this video, there are a few things we're going to be tackling in no particular order. First off, we're going to go ahead and at least get started with swapping the uh, manual shift linkage and gear selector into the car. As you can see, the automatic stuff is all actually removed and we were in progress mounting all the manual stuff to the gear selector housing. You guys will see this all here in a minute, but we ran into a problem, long story short, this bracket is different on the automatic and manual, so I am ordering a new one as I'm filming this, so this video will uh, be filmed over a couple of weeks probably. But you're gonna see us working on this a bit. Secondly, what hasn't been done yet is uh, the master cylinder being bled. Outside of that, everything else has really been put back together mechanically with the exception of really fluids and a couple of little things up top here. So really all that's missing is all these charge pipes, uh, a coolant hose and a couple little things here and there. The reason why those aren't put on though is because we tried to bleed the uh, clutch for about an hour maybe and uh, we can't get it to just build pressure properly. So uh, John and Lucas both thought that the uh, master cylinder is bad. So I went ahead and ordered a new master cylinder. So that should also be here later this week. But for now, I guess uh, let's go ahead, run it back and uh, see what we've done so far. Flashback. And then the big important item that'll actually allow the car to move is getting the manual transmission selector and gear linkage just sitting right here. Getting all of that in the car. So this is apparently a pretty tricky part and that's why I've waited for John Lucas to be able to give me a hand. So I already have removed, as you might remember in a previous video, I have this all unbolted from the car. So unhooking the manual or the automatic, I should say, part of this shouldn't be too difficult. But before we get into all that, I want to give a big shout out to Modern Classic Saab. This is actually one of his short shifters um, that I got from him can see it has a modern classic sob super high quality part um so i'm really really excited to put this in he makes a lot of cool really high quality performance parts for classic 900s 99s all the old sobs out there so go ahead and check out his website it's just modern classic sob and uh yeah i guess without further ado let's go ahead and get into it and then once this is installed i can actually say how i feel about it but i've heard a lot of really good things so first step here is we're going to uh probably pull this whole housing out so we can work on it over there and make it a little bit easier but popped off the neutral safety switch part right yep and uh so we think. got some good pictures of all the wires that go in there because there's a lot of them kind of no longer automatic sweet we'll take this over here we've got jordan's short shifter so gotta do a little bit of uh work with this now trying to get the automatic selector out and a lot of people when they do this job will just have a whole new housing unfortunately the junkyard car that we got all the manual parts from had that and the gear selector ripped out already so we're having to make do with the automatic one um so yeah we're just kind of hammering stuff making, making things work make it yeah and once they pull this last little pin out i think we'll be able to get to the last bolt that we <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, so uh, we had the great idea, or I should say John had the great idea, of why not just put the key in and then it freaking came back. So now we can get the last little torx there and hopefully pull all this out. Sponsored by Pittsburgh. Get that clip off. Oh, I see. Oh, sweet. Yeah, and, and the crash. <laughs> Don't need, don't need that, don't need that. Come on, come out. All there right, there we go. Don't need that anymore. Don't need that anymore <laughs> either, sweet. So we ended up doing a little bit of a custom work here because I've been told that these are the same automatic to manual, but we've kind of discovered, we think there are a couple little things that are different. So one of them is a reverse lockout. Uh, essentially this tab gets pushed up by the automatic transmission when it's in park or when the key's in and it allows you to move it well it doesn't look like the manual would have hit this tab to allow for the key to come out um 
So we, we simply just bend it out of the way, and now the key's going to work. There won't be any, the gear lockout. But that's not, not a huge world. deal. I'd almost prefer to not have the reverse lockout, as I was telling John. So we're going to start putting this back together a little bit, and uh, hopefully this will all uh, work out. Nice and tight. Yep. So it should key works. CNC, yeah. high quality yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah, locks in pretty well, actually. We're actually going to have to take a pause on this video for probably about a week because this plate right here goes right on the automatic. It goes just like this. But you can see the manual, the rod here in this bushing is held in place. Is held in place, yeah, by this this bracket, which on the manual cars is a plastic piece. I'll put a picture on the screen here for reference. So this hump right here pretty much seals that hole on the automatic cars because the automatic shifter comes through the bottom here. But um, yeah, so I'm gonna have to order a new one of those. Believe it or not, East South Parts has them in stock, but that'll still take a week to get here probably. So uh, I guess we'll catch up then, but it's coming together pretty good besides that. End of flashback. Back to present day and I've got my couple of new parts and right here we have our master cylinder. Um, Esau parts didn't have these so I went on Rock Auto. I was recommended to buy the Sox, I believe is how it's pronounced, master cylinder. So this was about 60 bucks. Um, brand new though so we'll throw that in and then secondly we obviously have this part, like I had mentioned, that these two between the automatic and manual are different. So this one will fit right on over here and seal properly as it should. Three things we got to do now. We've got to finish putting this back together and install it in the car. We've got to put our new master cylinder in and then we've got to bleed the clutch and fill it with fluids. This doesn't seem correct, and in retrospect, I should have known that before I even put it in. But that does not seem like it should. <laughs> it should actually function like that, at least compared to the new one. Next thing I want to do over here is disconnect the line that you can see right there. I have it started. I need to disconnect that that goes in the back of the master cylinder, and when I do that, I'm going to lose a bunch of brake fluid and clutch fluid, which is bad for paint. So I'm gonna try and pull as much fluid out of here as I can beforehand and to just save it since it's brand new fluid. And uh, then we can get on with loosening that line the rest of the way. I'm pretty sure that this was the, the issue with the car. You can see our new master cylinder here. I can't move it in and out. I mean, obviously it has some play here, but in terms of in and out, it does not. Whereas this one, yeah. In hindsight, this is completely my own ignorance. I should have done this to begin with and saved myself these couple hours of work now. But at least this one's out and uh, we can go ahead and throw the new one in. Got the new master cylinder all hooked up. I struggled with this last little bolt down here. Lucas got it in and uh, about two minutes. <laughs> so we're gonna try and bleed it again. Hopefully get some good results. Wow. Feel better? It feels like it's got pressure already. It probably does. <laughs> when I did my clutch line on my 900, I didn't even have to bleed it. Yeah, it's got pressure on it. Really? Uh, not yet, but all right, hold on. See down in there. It's just like just slave like is metal. moving. Yeah, because it's gonna start to draw. Awesome. Just keep pumping it. It's getting yeah. more movement. All right, you can see. Yeah. So we're trying another way to bleed it. Cameron had this um, power bleeder. We'll feed some of that uh, luscious brake fluid down there. Yummy, yummy. Getting air up the top, so that's good. Lucas is in here. Yeah. <laughs> He's <pumping>. getting it. <laughs> Appreciate his hard work as usual. Oh, my The car needs some trans fluid, so we're gonna put that in next. The owner's manual calls, or the Bentley manual, I should say, calls for 10W30. It's three quarts, so I went and got some Mobile One 10W30. Um, and we've got our engine oil 5W30 sitting up there we're gonna put in next as well. Going with a uh, two funnel setup here. So my first long funnel isn't long enough to get it accessible to us where we can safely funnel pour, so. Up. Yeah, so John's holding that other one up there for me like that, and then I'm pouring it in. Oh, is 
it out. A little sour. This is the money shot you gotta get when you're doing this kind of oh. uh, You guys distracted me. Oh, Coolant, oil, power steering, trans fluid. Um, this is all done as well. So all the fluids are done. We just need to throw the battery heat shield on, but obviously before we do all that, now we gotta sort out the shifter. Pulled the grommet out or the boot, whatever you wanna call it, because the manual one is different. And you can see right where it goes into the transmission, right through there. Just getting the uh, shifter assembly in. Since I spent all this time making a special socket for it, I'm putting the special nuts back on. So, uh, yeah, just gotta line up this back bolt. John's helping us underneath doing the dirty work. Let me try and go left and right. Yeah. I can go left. I can't go right still. I think, I can't tell if I'm actually, oh, I think that's first. That's second. That's third. That's fourth. I still can't go into fifth or reverse though. So you can't go to the right? I can't go to the right, yeah. Alright, put it in neutral? It's in neutral. So I messed up when I took this apart. And I didn't mark the splines properly, so I tried to do it after the fact because they're not proved like newer cars are. So we're just gonna guess here. I might have to pull it back apart. We're getting real close on this shifter. Just having a little bit of trouble with fifth. I can't find second now. And now we're uh, troubleshooting some more. Oh. Wait, there we go. Man, shift linkage, man, I tell ya. We got left and right movement, that's good. One. Ah. Uh, one. Dang. Having trouble two, there's three, four. Huh. After a lot of trial and error, John's been there the whole time. So a huge shout out to him. But we got first, second, third, fourth, fifth, reverse. We just hooked up this. We're trying to bypass the neutral safety switch for now. So John put this in park to see if it fires up. Um, I might need to put, put, put on the clutch, maybe. Is the battery connected? Yep. Oh, no. Battery is not connected. <laughs> Here we go. We got power. Pop it in neutral. Got power. Well, I tried it again, just quickly, thinking it wouldn't start, and it started. It started, the one time I didn't film. Come on now. It runs. That's some good old lifter tick again. What are you doing? Oh, it's in, I forgot it's in gear. We know the transmission's working at least. Let me pop yeah, it in it's, neutral. It's just open on the other side. All right, let's get it out of gear. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> oh, wait, it might be in gear. It is in reverse. I think I knew it was in reverse. Now it's in neutral. All right. Well, it runs. There's first, second, third, fourth, fifth. That was a weird noise. Turn. What happened? Was it the AC? I think it was free on. I thought it was free on it. Oh, if it's free on. Wait, I hear something. Is that yeah, something puddling? Line. It's all this line right here. Your line just popped. The uh, free online. It was definitely a free on mist. Oh no, that's a uh, clutch. That line was hit. Oh sh. Yeah. Oh no. Oh, uh, so that's all brake fluid. Oh. F <laughs> uh, no. Yeah. So like they were just saying car ran it ran decently well but until... you can see until this happened so this is the uh master cylinder line it was rubbing against the alternator right here and it just slowly 
It wasn't even slowly. It happened. It, it happened instantly. within like 30 seconds. Yeah. You can see the hole in the line right there. So I'm going to have to get a new line. But uh, next video, we'll be taking this thing for a drive. That's the funny part. It runs. The only NG93 thing. The only NG93. The only park fails. <laughs> a minute into it running. Hey, that was not, in, in its defense, it was not its fault. <laughs> it was operator <laughs> error on my end. <laughs> All right, well, that's gonna wrap it up. It runs, so I'm gonna have to source a new line and uh, we'll go from there and drive it in the next video. Take it easy.